ओम शांति ओम शांति says you are forever a witness and to not see this is the bondage That is why if there is a conflict, with whatever the experience is in this moment, that creates bondage. This is the subtlest golden chain. Subtlest golden chain is the desire for pleasant experiences and fear of unpleasant experiences. Subtlest bondage which keeps the witness bound to experiences. Forgetting, I'm merely a witness of all experiences. I cannot be found in an experience. Doesn't matter how intimate it may be. I'm not in it. And why soul behind Brahma Baba? Could live as karmatit and leave the body as karmatit soul. Zero attachment to any experience. Complete conviction in being the master of all experiences. Duality of experiences could not define him, the soul. Absolute witness. Zero bondage. Whilst living in life liberated. From identification with any experience.
That is why Baba's company was natural for him. We run and chase experiences as the mind. And sometimes run away and chase away. So run away from and chase away experiences for the fear and discomfort. Imagined fear and imagined discomfort. So it's very important to know mind is not having an experience. But mind is an experience in the soul. Sanskars are an experience in the soul. Intellect is an experience in the soul. Body is an experience in the soul. How often am I really seeing this? Because majority of the time, the way we live is I am this body and this person living in this world outside of me And I, as a person, live inside this world, experiencing the ever-changing world. And as the world changes, I, this person, am also changing. Look how much I have changed. From the day I took Gyan, what I was before and what I am now. How much I have changed. And how much more to change. Baba has mercy on the soul. What is my child believing himself to be? The changeful person? Living in a changeful world? Wanting to change more? Constant association with changing belief systems. Constant association with changing personality. 
constant association with changing body and changing states of mind. Constant association with changing ideas. This is all a jail. For the changeless one. A conceptual jail. That is why it's called illusion, because it feels so real. So to follow Brahma Baba, who's with us every moment, Bab Dada. Even now, he's there. But one can only feel it. And know it. Depending upon as who am I here? A changing personal phenomenon? Then I can't experience and know the presence of subtle or the subtle presence of Bab Dada. Only the one that himself is subtle can know the subtle presence of Bab Dada. Both are bound by the love of the subtle being. Um. Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Beautiful, lovely, loving, filled with or bombarded with love, I feel today. <laughs> hmm? Feeling bombarded with love. Today or every day? <laughs> hmm? It comes in doses, Baba's Murli, but more today, more merged in love today. 
Mm-hmm. Usually it's every day, some of the something or the other. Mm-hmm. Today's and loads. Let's see what comes. What did Baba experience in his heart-to-heart conversation with his children? Do you remember? What did Baba experience? A little more today. So what did you experience in your heart-to-heart conversations with Baba? Hmm? Baba is saying no more laboring. Then you should be like unlimited disinterest, Baba. We are not tied by our subtle bondages, our attachments. Have to be free. And it all kind of merges once we are truly feel that experience of God's love. Mm. And just beyond this mind, beyond the limited world, truly feels that it merges in that ocean of love with Baba. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not live in the ocean, Baba said to Dana. So why do you come out of the ocean? (laughs) What makes you come out of the ocean? Mind commentary or something of the mind of the limited world. You start swimming in that swim lane. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. It's moment by moment attention, you know, if the attention is diverted, then it automatically goes in the story world, Mm -hmm. in the scenes of the drama, Mm -hmm. and everything. That's where the energy starts going. And the mind playing those games. Is anybody really seeing what needs to be seen so that we are not so extroverted? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Papa says to check subtle strings in the mind that soul gets attached to. In meditation, we did mention, but what is the deepest attachment soul has? Or rather, not the soul has, but that binds the soul into a sleepy state. It experiences. Mm -hmm. Like we were saying, we know we are the experiencer. Actually, a guest. Witnessing here, the experiences. Yeah, we are the witness, yes. Yeah, we are the witness of all the experiences. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to just recreate those experiences. Then it's just not the right thing. Attached to our ideas, attached to our experiences, attached to certain likes and dislikes. Those are the subtle bondages. Mm -hmm. Expectations. That is a little bit gross on the gross side of it. Mm -hmm. Actually, the subtlest attachment, as was mentioned, in this moment, whatever my experience is, if there's any conflict with it, I'm already off the seat of being a witness. Already. That is why when we sit in meditation, 
it's very beautiful to sit in silence because you see immediately how my mind wants to start creating an experience. Immediately. And you can only know your truth by relaxing away from efforting and from doing and from creating. It's the immediate, okay, I sit, meditation means doing. <laughs> Om Shanti. Om Shanti. So just now, during meditation, so this morning, um, this one has been feeling very loved and emotional with, you know, with the Murli today. And immediately when, during meditation, I wasn't feeling same experience. So immediately the like just mentioned, went to how this morning I had this experience. <laughs> and immediately then, oh, mind is now looking for that experience. Great. Yeah. And this is the greatest bondage, the soul. Mm -hmm. If the soul can really step out of this, it's not even stepping out, can see this addiction, this hypnosis, this spell of wanting a certain kind of an experience to feel complete and full. But I can be in any scene, I can be, I the being can be in any scene, I, I can observe these different transient experiences appearing and disappearing. But I will not be caught up in any of them because there is an immediate unconscious identification with them. And I become them and I live as them in a scene. That's why we are so extroverted. Are we seeing the subtlety of the addiction to the experience of this moment of now, not later past? That's why we are constantly running away from the experience of now. That's why our mind is constantly running to past and future to find something else and run away from now. <laughs> constantly. And mind running is one thing. Soul is also running behind it. <laughs> I mean, hmm? so it, that is why being with Baba is actually the simplest thing that can happen I wanted to read what Brahma Baba's experience he's telling us he's with us and he's in every moment with us I wanted to read that part yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, very sweet. Yeah, and we will read it, Bab Dada. And Brahma Baba means Bab Dada, right? Both. And we read very slowly, yeah? You have love for Father Brahma in your hearts, don't you? Hmm? Father Brahma in our hearts. Father Brahma also has deep love for his children. For these tiny points of light. He's also the father of humanity. No? He's the father of all souls playing human parts. Yeah. He constantly makes each and every child. Now see you this being in between Bab Dada. The two points. I can maybe put that picture. But you can really see Bab Dada. And in between you are that point. Yeah. He constantly makes each and every child emerge. He's emerging your perfect form. <laughs> he is emerging your perfect angelic state in front of him. He's seeing you as that soul with that angelic thought that you're wearing from Shiv Baba. Hmm? 
Hmm? So he constantly makes each and every child emerge and gives them a special current of light. So it means he can see you as you really are in front of Bab Dada. You can see yourself as this being of light who's not addicted to any experience, just as a being of light. Who's so powerful, who's that light that illuminates every experience without any preference or resistance. That's the being Bab Dada is seeing. And he's giving you, the child, that little light, a special current of light to make them equal, means to make you know you are equal, to make you feel that equality with him. Do you see that? Do you feel that? <laughs> the child Know your truth. Know your absolute self. Look, everything is inside of you. You are not inside any of the experiences. Experiences are inside of you. So when Baba says, you are not in this world, you are not of this world, it's not just physical world. You're not of this world also means the world of old sanskaras inside of you. All these different sanskaras, set of sanskaras inside of you. You're not of this world of sanskaras. Because sometimes we just become so physical that we only see as physical world. You know? But actually Baba's piercing and seeing you through those layers of the, those old world of old sanskars. So he's seeing you beyond all of this that you're carrying inside of you, the tiny point. Look at his vision, yeah? So I read this again. He constantly makes each and every child emerge and gives you, my child, the special current of light to make you see your equality. In his past life, knowing the value of each jewel, he would use a particular jewel for a special piece of jewelry, right? As Dada Lekraj. In the same way, even now, Baba is constantly considering using particular jewels with the specialities for special tasks. So he's using each and every Brahmin child. Whether you know it or you don't know it, he's using it. <laughs> Hmm? Can you feel his presence? Babdada's presence? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's first hand responsible for us. <laughs> he is first hand responsible for us. In the same way, even now, Baba is constantly considering using particular jewels. Sorry, he constantly sings Wa Wa for the speciality of each one. Wa, my invaluable jewel. Now he's totally a being of love, no? that is why. Totally avyat means totally beyond the sense of any bondage of any experience. That being of light. He's seeing us like that. Yeah. Free from all the bondages. And that bondage is what? What is that bondage, remember? The golden, <laughs> subtle <laughs> golden. <laughs> Actually, yeah. bondage is, I'm a witness, and to not see that is the bondage. Because when I don't see myself as the witness and I know my, I don't know myself as the witness, then I'm knowing myself as the experience which I'm witnessing. Mm -hmm. That's the only bondage, actually. Even these likes, dislikes, expectations, all of this is not a bondage. These are all experiences within me. 
right? But attachment to a specific or preference of a certain experience is a bondage. It is like identification with that particular experience. Yeah? Somewhere you're identifying yourself as one who can only have good experience and one you should not have bad experience. <laughs> yeah? So if you are identified with that identity, then you are already part of the experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah? But knowing yourself as that being of light who's illuminating all different types of experiences, but without you, those experiences cannot exist. Knowing yourself as that light is freedom. So where is the bondage? An illusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is why if I'm not currently in this second, which is going to become past in next second, already it's become a past. Mm -hmm. But in this second, if there's contentment and not conflict with what is here right now in my experience, body, mind experience and circumstantial experience, whatever it is right now, if there's zero conflict with it, but total, total embrace of it. Then I am like Baba, with Baba. I will experience Baba. I will feel, feel Baba. Dada, you're with me. I know it. Physical eyes don't need to see because physical eyes have no life. There's no person behind it to seeing, needing to see some physical presence here. Because there's no physical person behind the eyes trying to look for physical presence of Bab Dada. <laughs> yeah? But there's a very subtle being using these eyes. So the subtle being can see Bab Dada. You know? Not wearing any costume of any experience. That being is me. So that's why Baba is saying that Baba is constantly singing, Wah, my invaluable Jew, Wah. Now, what stops you from feeling that being that invaluable Jew? See that experience in this moment. What is stopping you from seeing that invaluable Jew forever? Your mind may be saying, No, no, right now I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no not right now while I experience <laughs> forever while I experience we are looking for <laughs> yeah God while I experience not Maya while I experience <laughs> yeah so forever while I experience what's making you feel your Baba's invaluable Jew and what's stopping you from making you feel that you are constantly Baba's invaluable Jew Bab Dada's. Hmm? See, many children wonder what Father Brahma does in the subtle region. They ask, we are doing service here, but what does Baba do in the subtle region? However, Father says, just as he was always with the children in the Sakar form, similarly, he now stays in the subtle region. He stays with the children there too. He's not alone. <laughs> He's sitting there with your perfect form in front of him, constantly giving light to that perfect form. <laughs> One day you can catch it. <laughs> in the book, One day you will catch it. <laughs> So it was here the Maya was saying, you know, even Brahma Baba had to tell Dadi Gulzar to go and see his perfect form and yeah. see, you know, what the difference is. Mm -hmm. And here it was King Wish could have that kind of a communication. What does the subtle form look like? <laughs> Again, it was trying to draw pictures in the mind. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Angel or something. <laughs> Angelic body. And that is fine, you know, that nothing wrong with that. But let that just image be with that uh, with that acknowledgement that that is who I am. Then this dress will become looser. 
Yeah. So th that dress was like light, light dress, you know, not a heavy body like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a dress of thought, no? It's a dress of mm -hmm. Maya's thought that yeah. you're wearing. And Maya was also saying, what speciality did Baba see here? <laughs> and again, it was getting into the person, you know, yeah. more than in the... Yeah, it's just a thought. And you, the being, can eliminate that thought, but see that it's just a passing thought. It's got nothing to do with your truth. Right? Mm -hmm. And that is the only way you can experience your fullness in your karmati state now. By not giving your life of belief to it. Right? These mm -hmm. thoughts will come. But Baba is just staying there, shining light on your truth forever. Know that. On your angelic form forever. <laughs> so Baba is saying... That the father doesn't enjoy himself without the children. So just as the children are not able to think of anything without the father, similarly, the father too cannot think of anything without the children. So beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Baba cannot live. Now who says Sakar Pana? Who needs Sakar Pana? I'm getting Avyakta Pana. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Why are Ashtaratna or Dadis not in the form like Brahma Baba, those who have become Avyat? Because only Brahma Baba has become Karmatit fully. Nobody else has. At least Baba has not mentioned anyone else except Brahma Baba. How about Mama? No. Not even Mama. Baba is not mentioned. Really? Not that she's attained karma teeth state, no. Because she comes as Lakshmi. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Radhe and everything. Mm -hmm. Mama has taken rebirth. That's very clear. Baba has mentioned that. So incognito in that sense, all dadis are also souls. And we don't know where they have taken a birth. But they're also tiny points of lights. Right? If we take them away from their role and their part, who are they? Living lights. Right? And those living lights, Baba has only talked about, I think, Dadi Prakashmani, that that soul has taken a birth in a boy body. In a very, very spiritual religious family. That is all. But it's so beautiful to see na, that soul which was in a female body, literally worshipped by Brahmins, <laughs> and now is in some male body. Nobody even knows. How changeful this whole thing is. Mm -hmm. Dadi Gulzar, nobody knows because there's nobody after Dadi Gulzar to give such a message. <laughs> because there are only two ruts Baba has had. Brahma Baba and Dadi Gulzar and no one else. And we don't need to know. Why do we need to know? We just need to know, yes, these points of lights, they've moved on on their next phase of the journey. And all we need to know is that Brahma Baba's soul behind Brahma Baba, he's in his avyakt form, means he's in his light form, that soul. And that soul is constantly shining light on my perfect truth. He's constantly there with me. The more I see myself in my karmati truth, Baba is already there with me. I see, I feel Brahma Baba in front of me. That soul, right? If you really have accepted your karmati truth, you will experience Bab Dada with you. Because everything else is imagination for you. In your mind. So now Baba can use the pure mind and help you, um, the soul, to see that you are that perfect form and giving that experience even to your pure mind.
is basically your part within you. It doesn't have a separate identity. So when you, the soul, is experiencing your perfect form, your mind is also, pure mind is also experiencing it unknowingly, unconsciously, it's experiencing it. Just know you are that light. That is why we need to keep seeing and revisiting our truth that I am this changeless being. I'm not a person living in this world and having an experience. That's how we live, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But I am a soul. Within me, there is this experience of a person having different experiences. <laughs> huge difference. It's a huge discovery if you can see it clearly. It's a massive discovery if you can see this clearly. But if you can't, that's okay too. That's the part. <laughs> hmm? Do you see what we just said? Mm -hmm. One is to live. Can you repeat, Sister Neil? So I think you said that the person the person is within the soul and who sees the different experiences within that. So it's what is the, the first way we live? What is the first way we live usually? First way we live is we see yourself as a person, right? That's how we see it. And the experiences within the experience of a person. So that's what the we said. There are multi multiple experiences in that experience of a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what you were talking about. Yeah, so it's like you're living as a person. The soul is living as a person which is living in a world outside of itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is constantly changing. Right. So first, I think you said the soul has that experience of a person and within the person, if it can see clearly the many experiences which are experienced by the person. Yeah, the soul is the being which has this personal experience within itself, right? Mm -hmm. Which is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is all. Can we see this distinction very clearly? then you will find everything is happening inside of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you are like that covering inside of which everything is happening, so then you, that covering is already with Baba, no? <laughs> hmm? But if you believe yourself inside of the cover, then you have to try and peek if I can find Baba somewhere. Right. If, if we always feel we are with Baba and then we seeing from sitting with Baba, we are seeing this person going through the different experiences is also another way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we're at least not leaving Baba at all. <laughs> the thing is, what is happening very quickly, if we are seeing it like that, this will still again become a reference point because this body that is so big, it just takes over in no time. But if you see this body is also inside of you, the being of light, then it has no room to take over you as you. Home Shanti, sister. Yeah, okay. So then if you're making the body inside us, then the soul is bigger than this person. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if the soul, usually the way they show the pictures, the soul is behind the eye and the body yeah. is that big thing. <laughs> exactly. Sister, this one has a question. Uh, so we say, right, uh, soul is beyond... Uh, words and beyond mind, right? Soul is. Um, so can soul be, uh, but the, all the experiences that happens through the senses, right? Like 
So mm. how can experiences are happening through body, through senses, through mind, through everything. But they are Correct. the rules for experience for the soul. But soul is not its experience. Correct. But without, when it's beyond, right? Like um, supreme soul or like soul is beyond thoughts. We always say, right? Beyond thoughts. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be something which, I mean, Baba is explaining it to us and giving us that. But soul cannot experience without the tools, right? Like the tools that they have, the the soul has, right? So the question was coming today was like, if it's beyond experience and beyond time and beyond thoughts, how can soul even experience like the the being or the reality? Soul doesn't need to exist. exist. That it exists. I, I know you always say it does not. I mean, it's beyond. But then it's all words, right? Like there was some confusion that was creating mind was creating. Well, this you are trying to grasp your truth with your mind. You can never do that. If you try to grasp your truth, which is so subtle, which is beyond the mind and trying to use a limited tool to try to, it's like trying to use a ruler to measure an ocean. Mm. <laughs> Can you use the ruler to measure an ocean? Not the ruler, but some other tool for sure. <laughs> There's no tool. You are before any tool. So how can you use a tool to measure yourself? See, this it's is the mind is such a... Huh? It's only when we come in the body, we can experience it. It's not yeah. otherwise. Because otherwise, we are... Even in the body, we can only experience the opposite experiences. Correct. Right? I can experience the, my mind feeling low. I know that it is my mind's experience of feeling low. It is my mind creating a particular, um, it is an experience within me, the soul, of a particular thought within me. A tamopradhan thought is being experienced by the soul that I am through the tool of my mind. Then I'm having a satopradhan experience of a thought. So either being can experience the satopradhan thought feeling extremely blissful through my mind. I'm experiencing all of this through my mind, intellect and samskars. Right? But who am I that is experiencing both? That me is the absolute one which is before and beyond all experiences. I can know me, I can be me, but I cannot experience me. But I can experience the Sattu Pradhan Sanskars, the Tamu Pradhan Sanskars, the Raju Pradhan Sanskars, the Raju Sanskars, everything I can experience. But I can only know me. Because I'm beyond time, beyond space. And to experience, you can experience objects and contents. And you can know your absolute truth. Baba never has a body. Does that mean he doesn't exist and he feels I'm not there anymore? <laughs> hmm? Baba does not have an egoistic mind. Baba does not have a body. Does that mean that he feels that, oh, how do I experience myself without this? Hmm? Hmm. Correct. He just knows he is. That's it. He's just being who he is. That's it. He doesn't need the assistance of a body to know he's God. He doesn't need the assistance of some ego mind to give him some experience of blissful experience. Oh, I had such a blissful experience. I'm God. <laughs> no. Does he? He just knows he is. That's why he is God. And same applies to us too. Yeah. If we just know who we are yeah. and not look for those experiences of the mind or get trapped yeah. with those experiences. Or expand with those experiences. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hmm. 
That's a beautiful point you said, sister, that the God doesn't need a body to experience his fullness, his virtues, and all the qualities. Mm. He knows. He knows he is. And God doesn't need a mind also to experience his beauty, his perfection, or anything. <laughs> In fact, his mind, intellect, and sanskars are constantly experiencing his beauty. So they don't even have a separate identity. And we have the same potential. Yeah. We are, we are, his, we are the master and we have his DNA. Yeah. So we are... <laughs> and, so... This why, and this is why in confluence age only I can know my absolute truth. Which is beyond any experience. And I can know that the opposite experiences of the mind of Sattva Pradhan and, Raj, and Tamo Pradhan experiences are happening within me. So Sattva Pradhan body and Tamo Pradhan body is within me. You know? So we don't have to try and use the ruler to measure the ocean. It is the biggest mistake you will make. Giving life to the illusion that can never be otherwise. You cannot measure the ocean, period. <laughs> can you measure the ocean? Can you measure Baba? <laughs> Try and measure his love? <laughs> Can you? It's immeasurable. <laughs> Can you measure Baba's love, Sister Priya? <laughs> no, it's it's unlimited. Always Baba's love is... But so is yours. You are just like Baba. So we don't want to contract ourselves in that limitation of believing ourselves to be some measurable something. <laughs> yeah? You know, something, or someone, some limited contracted personality, which sometimes feels expanded because of some experience and sometimes feels contracted because of some experience. It does happen. <laughs> Somehow this one was like, you know, uh, was was swimming and nowadays it's like swimming in meditative state. And suddenly this thought came in, is like, are you just chanting this word, I am a soul, I am a soul, or are you experiencing it? So, this lately, the, and then suddenly that thought came in, is like, you know, if it's beyond something, then how do you know it exists? If it's beyond... Yeah. There is something you will need, right, to validate. And then, then it was like, maybe... That's the whole <laughs> thing we are here for. To know that I'm the absolute one. You can only know by the experience of the opposites. Hmm. That is why we come here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> opposite. <laughs> Loads of opposite. <laughs> See, that is why we were reading this Murli yesterday. No? And in that Murli, Baba said very clearly, you live in introspection so that you know your fullness. And in that, you know the contrast of the opposites that you have within you. And and, and like uh, nowadays, it's like this one is like observing and seeing all the thoughts coming and going. And especially when swimming, right? There's nothing else, just one task. And then that time, in, in that 30, 45 minutes, this one is see, seeing it is not waste. Asaniwa, Vuniwa, or future, or something, right? Like, kuch to bhi, sister. Like, and then this one is like, okay, okay. And he's like, how do you know that, you know, you are a soul? You're just chanting. It's like, no, that's, that's my reality. But looks like you are just saying you are a soul. Because and then... Yeah, because I think our mind is constantly looking for a proof in a laboratory. Yeah. So I, can, I can feel it. I can see it as a Rini. I can see that some proof is there that I'm a soul, some star. I have to see and measure and whatnot. Yeah. Or maybe that's how uh, like the conditioning is of, yeah. of the mind has been, right? Like why this or Oh, how do you know or like do you have a justification yeah. <laughs> that that's how the conditioning of the mind is so that's what is looking for yeah. yeah and that is why you can only know yourself beyond your mind if you try to know yourself with your mind you can never know yourself 
mind can think about who you are and can think a lot and can contemplate a lot. And it's very useful, actually. It's not bad. It's very useful because that's how we begin. And we do need in the beginning this contemplation. We do need to kind of really get the mind also out of itself. <laughs> hmm? Your yeah, interesting part is um, like this one is watching thoughts coming and going. Like earlier when this one used to go for swimming, um, couldn't do much, like 30 minutes gets exhausted. But now, even after one hour, uh, the lightness is there. There's no like heavy baggage or earlier, oh, 30 minutes me swimming karna hai. Now, this one goes with the surrender mind. Baba, this one wants to do swimming. Uh, so what we say, planning or, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that heavy baggage, mm -hmm. there is a huge shift. Sister. After one hour also, the body feels light. Mm -hmm. There is nothing there. And still see and that is coming and going. Experience. And that is still a temporary experience. Don't get attached to any experience as a wow, what an experience. You're already got caught up in it. No experience can be wow for the soul. Does that make sense? That hmm. wow catches you. <laughs> got it. Got it. I don't know. That wow for lightness was there for sure. That yeah. oh, body is so light. It's like feeling like there is nothing. And there was no expectation. Nothing. Just. There is. The wow factor is an expectation. Uh, Do we say wow. How beautiful body is feeling heavy. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Already there's a subtle preference there for what the body should feel like. Now look at it from the perspective of the tiny point. Both are experiences, whether the body is heavy or the body is light. It's just an experience of the opposites. But I am that light beyond that experience. And that is what Brahma Baba's entire attention was. So I will read this. Baba is saying, the father doesn't enjoy himself without the soul's children, yeah? Just as the children are not able to think of anything without the father, similarly, the father too cannot think of anything without the children child. He does not stay there alone. He stays there with you. Now, how are you there also and how are you here also? What does that mean? <laughs> If you see the body, then you think I'm here. But if you see the soul, then you're a subtle being. You're not here or there. You're not in time or in space. You're just having an experience of a gross body. And you can also have an experience of a subtle body. But both the experiences are simply, simply temporary experiences. You are simply a being of light which enables all the experiences to take place. So really knowing myself as this real being of light, you know, like is there any me in this voice? Is there any me in this movement? Is there any me? But are these movements and this voice within me? Yeah. So when I know myself as that, how many of these old me's are there within me, the real me? How many old me's are there? <laughs> so what Baba's vision is doing is pulling me out of all these old me's. This cloud of sanskars, Baba's pulling me out of it. Yeah? So between me, the real me, and between me combined with Baba, there's only this one thought. I am something else in between. And this one is not enough. This, this identity, if I, the being, believe myself to be this last identity, oh, I'm not enough right now. I need to do something more. 
like I'm someone else right now and I need to be someone something else by becoming some more of a practice and I become something else. Isn't it? And you know what majority of the souls who are listening to this understanding? One question, of course, after some time of seeing it, they become in tune to it. But the very first question, you know what they ask? Everybody, I would say 80%. You know, what is the question they ask? <laughs> How do you know it's the mind speaking or the soul speaking? How do you know it's the mind? That's the second question. That's the second question. <laughs> the first question. So what do I do now? I have nothing to practice. <laughs> Nothing to do now. If I'm already a soul, then what do I do? Baba always says, remember your soul and be a soul and remember me alone. That's all, exactly. Baba says. That's all the whole gyan is. You are a soul and remember me alone. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And live your life from that space for a long period of time. But no. Mind will come in between and it will say, no, no, I have to do something to be must be a soul. Baba has given me so many different purusharts to do. <laughs> Long to-do list <laughs> to be a soul. <laughs> I think, sister, from, from like right now in this era, like in the Iron Age, I mean, for us, it's kind of confidence age, but the other souls. Mm -hmm. This one has observed, everybody's like, Oh, I have nothing to do. I get worried if I have nothing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is that sanskara only Baba is using in the beginning to get us from the impure doing to pure doing. I would not even say, I would say more confused doing to a little bit less confused doing. What yeah. do you mean, sister? Sorry? What do you mean? So it's like, you know, we are so much of a doer, no, as a person. The soul has taken up this costume of a person and has become a big time doer. Right? <laughs> big time. It is a depressive state for many who become retired and who become, whose parts are like right now not much doing because of body's ill health and they feel agitated and restless and anxious. It's like ants are all over them. They don't know what to do with themselves if they can't do something with their body. You know? No, no, no. We are not talking about that, Jui. We are saying that it is a doing is an addiction for the soul, right? It is an addiction for the soul. So Baba is coming and he's saying, okay, if your mind has to do something, let it do something with me. Make it do this drill and that drill and this drill and that drill. <laughs> so at least it will become calmer than before. And then it becomes a little less chattery. Then you can have a glimpse of your truth. And when you have a glimpse of your truth, then you will be able to see who you are. You will have a certain possibility of a contrast. Right? Right? That is what happens in the beginning. But as you can really see it more with Baba clearly, you begin to see, actually, I'm before and beyond the glimpse also. I am this being forever. And this being is never a doer, never a thinker, never a feeler, never even an experiencer. Never even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's what somebody was saying. What? Sorry? Mm -hmm. the, if like there's nothing in that home up in, in corporate, there's nothing to be done. <laughs> nothing to be done. You are enough as you are. 
You're just enough as you are. Letting go is what you need to do now. If doing is to be done at all, even that happens naturally if you know who you are. But even if it's something has to be done, that doing if absolutely needs to be done, let go. Let go of identification with the mind, with the body, its movements, its changes, everything. You cannot know yourself by adding something on top of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So let go. Yeah? Peace is your natural fragrance. You cannot really attain peace by doing something. You have to let go of doing to be who you are. You have to let go of being a thinker to be who you are. You cannot think yourself to be a peaceful soul. But you can observe the thought, thinking I am a peaceful soul. Do you see the difference? It's it's where that's where the attention needs to be. That real start, it's like Anadi Swarup, the eternal form. Who can observe the mind thinking, I'm a peaceful soul, I'm a peaceful soul, I'm a peaceful soul. And nothing wrong with it. That is the very nature of it. It's better to say that the mind is saying I'm a peaceful soul than I'm saying I'm an angry person, I'm an angry person, I'm an angry person. <laughs> but the one who's observing both is the me who's beyond both of these statements, both of these thoughts. I'm just a silent being. Yeah. So more you let go of your mental and physical doing, more you will know yourself. Yeah. So Baba is saying that he stays with you, my child. Very few children were able to experience his company in the corporeal form. Now in the subtle form, he constantly fulfills the responsibility of companionship with every child at whatever time they want and whenever they want. So Baba is there in all time zones. Yeah. <laughs> because he's beyond time and beyond space. So whatever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want, he's with you. And this is the subtle presence of every soul. We can be present like this for other souls also. By being with Baba, I'm also as a soul present for other souls like that. Right? You will see Baba will put you in somebody's dream. <laughs> and they will see you in your dream. In their dream, not your dreams. They will see you in their dream. And whenever they have a difficult time, they will see your face also. And they will feel that, oh, what would you have done in this situation? That is how your angelic self is being used by others. Right? Because you are living life like that. That is how Baba is creating angels. He's re-emerging your angelic truth. Just live with me as you are. I'm seeing your perfection. And such a beautiful thing Baba has given after that. Now in this, he constantly fulfills the responsibility of companionship with every child at whatever time they want and whenever they want. In the pictures, Krishna has been shown with each and every gopi that is a memorial of this time. So Baba is with each and every Brahmin soul. If they wish to be with him, 
He's with the, each and every Brahmin soul. In fact, he's with every soul if they wish to choose to be with him. Because he's a father of humanity. But Brahmin souls have a better chance to experience Bab Dada because they have known the knowledge. But there have been times when those who do, are not in Jnana have got the Sakshatkar of uh, Brahma Baba. Right? So he's doing it for all the 8 billion souls. 8 billion souls. He's available for all. He's a father of entire humanity. A subtle jealousy came. <laughs> subtle jealousy. Possessiveness came. Possessiveness. <laughs> we are working effort. You have to shine light on us. Not. Uh-huh. <laughs> But Baba is saying, the mind created subtle jealousy instantly. Yeah. And you or see, the now you have the power to even see that separate from you, right? Because mm -hmm. more of what you are experiencing with Bab Dada, you want all your brothers to experience the same, right? But that's okay. If the mind has that tendency, that's all right. See it separate from you and it will be merged by Bab Dada in their vision. And Baba will show you, no, no. That's not you. This is you. <laughs> you are that world mother. The tiny point of light. And you want all your brother souls to experience there, to know there, truth beyond the limited experiences. Right? So now through this avyakta form, Bab Dada is fulfilling the responsibility of companionship with every child. So, so what if we were not in Sakar? Who cares? We the souls are experiencing Bab Dada in, our, in his avyakta form. Both together, double engine, not even one. <laughs> double engine. <laughs> hmm? True. And in their perfect form. So through this avyakt form, Baba is fulfilling the responsibility of companionship with every child. No matter what time of the day or night it may be, even if it is 2 a.m. or 2.30 a.m. in the Sakar form, he would only visit the center sometimes. Now, however, he goes in his avyakt form to visit pure households too. What else does the father have to do? He has to make you children equal and take you back home with him. That is what he has to do. What else does he have to do? So he remains busy doing this. Yeah? Now, some souls feel that, oh, but... We don't have that pure household right now. Don't worry, Baba is seeing the intention behind the effort you, the soul, is putting in. Okay? Know that. Baba will not discriminate. Baba knows your intention. True? Never feel left out. Baba will never leave any soul out. Yeah. So this will this is a blessing that will keep you free from laboring. Free from laboring. Because again, being impure is another personal identity, no? It's not the mm -hmm. identity that the soul has. So really know this very clearly. It is the soul that Baba is talking to and the soul is ever pure child of Bab Dada. And he's shining light on your ever pure, perfect form. Just know this. So that all those sticky feelings can be separate from you. Yeah. And somebody earlier wrote that I would recommend and I would suggest 
Uh, because somebody earlier wrote that Dadi Guzar is here and there or she's an abhyakt vatan and all. We don't need to go into all of this. Yeah, this is all Maya mind doing all of this also. These are all presumptions and assumptions of others. Why are we entertaining it? All we know that's also my soul brother who was a great instrument for God who surrendered everything to Baba body, mind, everything and a beautiful example for us that we all can also be like that. That is a possibility for every soul. Isn't that enough to know? Hmm? Why go into this game of assumptions and presumptions of what must have happened to this one and that one? How is it helping you? Being awake yourself. You can't live the life of comparison. Exactly. Baba needs your part to be your part. He's not comparing your part with Dadi Guzar's part or Dadi Janki's part or Brahma Baba's part. No. Like yesterday we say that we are the pieces of the puzzle. Exactly. Each puzzle has its own unique shape and it's, it's perfect exactly. in the big world of drama. Exactly. So really know that the uniqueness of your own part and it's a suggestion, of course, stay out of all of this. Otherwise, you're creating an unknown, unconscious trap for yourself. Anyone else would want to share something? Om Shanti, Didi. Om Shanti. Didi, I have a question from today's movie that is tomorrow for you. Okay. Baba. Baba says that even for five minutes, children are not able to sit in the accurate yard. My children are not able to remember me accurately, even for five minutes. I would yes. like to know what is this accurate remembrance that Baba is talking about? Yeah. Accurate remembrance is just being who you are with Baba. Out of the entire old identity of being a person, in my case, Rini. Yeah? As a person, I cannot sit at the same table as God. I can never. I can sit for hours as Rini and I would still be just sitting as Rini, imagining being with God. This personal identity, imagining being with God, right? Whereas I, the being, whose eternal, original truth is changing, unchanging being, who is living life with God eternally. Eternally, I'm living life with God. Whether I remember it, I don't remember it. Half the cycle, I live as me. So I'm actually like kind of just like Baba and Baba said today in this Murli night, Sunday Murli, you are like Baba. So it's okay for the first half when Baba is retired. Because you're like Baba. Right? Remember anybody? Baba said that in Murli today. We're not reading the whole Murli, so that is why. But Baba said that. So first half we are living as master gods. Right? So we are, in our consciousness, we are with Baba in that sense. Because there's no separation between God and I. The second half, what happens is, I start believing myself to be something else altogether. Some objects of my experience, I start to believe myself as that. Yeah? I start to believe myself as my voice, as my body, as the movements, as the sound, as the taste, as the touch, as the smell, as the name, as the form. 
as the possessions, as the relationships. I start believing myself as my thoughts, feelings, emotions. And that goes on for 2,500 years. <laughs> hmm? And now Baba comes and he says, have accurate yoga with me. Now, who is he talking to? As who am I really listening to Murli and talking to him and being with him? That is why we can only live yesterday also, and I will probably say this every day till end of Confluence Age. Those who are introspective are the only ones who can experience combined company of God. Those who are extroverted, they just make it very difficult for themselves. Yeah? But that too is the part. But to know that to really be with Baba, attention is on Baba and I combined, aware of what is happening on all these 63 and scars, birth of, I mean, 84 births and scars, what's happening in my mind constantly. Because they're presenting themselves every moment. And I'm aware, my intention and attention is just on being aware rather than how to act in the scene in the drama or how to respond in the scene in the drama. That is not my attention. My attention is who am I? And I'm not getting trapped in the subtle feelings and the commentaries and the subtle narratives and the subtle sense of meanness and minus in my mind. Now, life is bringing you exactly what you need. Do you think you can go somewhere and have a better introversion? Like somebody was asking this one, should I go to Vipassana and have better introversion? I said, then we have not understood Baba's Gyan. <laughs> hmm? Because life is giving you what you need so that these things can surface and come to the conscious level for you to see it with detachment. But if I don't want to see it, I want to run away from it, then they go further deeper inside and stay latent and dormant there. And they will keep deceiving you. So each one of us is getting exactly what we need. May not be what you want, but it's what you need. <laughs> yeah? So really know the truth of who you are with Baba. And stay with Baba and you will see different, different things are coming up. Some snake here, some ghost here, some beautiful flower there. It's like different, different variety thoughts and experiences are coming sitting with Baba. And you're seeing it all. It's just a passing show. Are you afraid of snakes? Priya, afraid of snakes? Yes, I am. You are? Okay. <laughs> so, so, and afraid of ghosts? <laughs> sorry, sorry, didn't get you. Afraid of ghosts? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we will have yes. to face that fear of ghosts and snakes also, right? Huh. And only from your perfect form can you really face it all. So make Baba your reference point for who you are. It's like really put Baba there as you are like Baba. Just put Baba there. Yeah? And then see those snakes and those ghosts within you. In your mind. 
That's why Baba says it requires courage to hold the hand of God and walk with him. <laughs> it's not against the flow of the world. It's against the flow of your inner world that you're going. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Thank you, Baba. Okay, anyone else? Somali, do you want to share your experience in Hindi class then? In the evening? Yes, Didi. Okay. Om Shanti, Didi. Om Shanti. Didi, can I speak in Hindi? Yeah, Boli. Uh, कल भी ये प्रश्न रह गया था दीदी mm -hmm. जो कई दिन से मन में चल रहा है कि जैसे घर में या प्रवृत्ति में जहाँ रहती हूँ कई सेवाधारी है घर के काम में हेल्प करने के लिए mm -hmm. तो इस आत्मा की जो आदत है मतलब आत्मा अपने पाठ में लॉक एंड की ज्यादा रखती है कि कहीं भी जाना हो तो लगता है कि नहीं ये सब चीज लॉक इन की होना चाहिए क्योंकि कई आसपास में है सेवाधारी तो एक मन में प्रश्न आया कि जैसे आपने अपना एक अनुभव शेयर किया था कि जब आप इंडिया आई थी तो आपने जैसे ताले भी नहीं लगाए थे सब कुछ खुला छोड़ के आई थी तो तब से ये मन में चल रहा है कि क्या क्या ये सही हो रहा है जो मैं मैं आत्मा कर रही हूँ क्या ये बॉन्डेज नहीं है mm -hmm. तो इसको थोड़ा सा क्लियर कीजिए क्योंकि ये सेंटर पे भी जैसे दीदी देखते हैं ना कि वहां भी बड़ी दीदी जो है अपने अंडर में सब कुछ रखती है कई चीजें होती है कि उनके परमिशन से निकालना पड़ता है या वो खुद निकाल के देती है तो ये वहां से भी कुछ अंदर हो गया कि नहीं कुछ चीजें ऐसी होती कि जो अपने को ध्यान रखना है ठीक है आप ध्यान रखें डिपेंड करता है हर एक आत्मा के ऊपर है ना जितना आप आत्मिक कॉन्शियसनेस में रहेंगे उतना ही अटैचमेंट्स दे विल बिकम लूजर एंड लूजर राइट बट इफ देर सर्टन थिंग्स विच यू फील दैट नो दैट इट्स बेटर टू काइंड ऑफ कीप इन लॉक एंड की नॉट बिकॉज यूर अटैच टू इट but it's just because it's not tempting anybody else into doing something that is not right for them okay. yeah check your intention behind it that what is the reason that mm -hmm. you are putting things in lock and key because you are afraid of losing it or because it's it's like something which is there but you can't really you don't really want to tempt others to feel that temptation to take it does that make sense yes stiti so check it like Quite that clear. yeah check it like that okay hmm? thank you yeah okay complete silence of the soul now when we step out of the scene there will be different experiences through body and mind nothing changes about the soul staying with your changeless truth whilst everything else outside is changing your interest is only in the company of one father and none other what happens in the outside world what happens in the inner world it really means nothing to you the being of light 
it's also fixed in nature. When the wisdom of the Father is seen clearly by the soul, that everything is so fixed in nature, inner drama, outer drama. Why temper with it? Stay with Baba. Stay with your truth. And let things unfold the way they are supposed to unfold. And the being has completeness, Shay. The drama is unfolding, inner and outer. All experiences. In the most accurate way. So zero interest in what happens in the world, outside or inside. Only and only interested in one Baba and I. The unmanifest reality. Untouched by the manifestations. From the unmanifest reality. More you're interested in your unmanifest truth, manifestation merges back into you the seed. And your purest feelings, your best wishes, become one with God's purest feelings. And this auspiciousness serves the world and serves your mind. Only one attention through the day. I stay immersed in Baba's pure feelings and any impurity of feelings that may be coming from the scripted mind. I, the being, do not allow it to mix just with my silent and still presence. In the womb of the Supreme Parent. That's the only attention. Keep your feelings pure. and stray introverted. Do not believe the voice in your mind. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you.